Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Alistair Aquatics. For those of you that are new here, hello, my name's Alistair and this channel is all about aquariums and fish tank related content. So if you are new here, uh, feel free to subscribe. And for those of you that are back again, hello, I know I've been gone for a little while, but I just wanted to do a video on my aquarium rack and how it's doing. Please excuse uh, any creaky flaws you might hear in this video. Um, but yeah, the aquarium rack has been up and running now for around sort of six months. Uh, I have done a video in the past on how I put this rack together. It's sort of a custom build, um, but I'll quickly give you a rundown. So I got the rack. It's just a heavy duty rack from Amazon. I think I got it from. And I then got some sheets of plywood, cut them to size to fit each shelf. I then covered them in a black vinyl to protect them from moisture. And from then on, I got to setting up the aquarium. So these aquariums are all the same size on the bottom three levels and on the top it's a slightly smaller 45 centimeter aquarium for the multifasciatus at the top there but the lights on the bottom three these are Kessel lights um, on these three tanks they all run off an Eheim mini up internal filter and then they also are run by I believe it's an Aquarel heater uh, but I will put the exact model um, in the description below. Uh, the lights are all controlled by this nifty little unit here. This is a Kessel Control. Whoops, excuse me, I've just got my mic caught there on the phone. Um, but yeah, if I press there, you can have a little closer look. So basically this allows you to just set sort of ramping up periods, ramping down, any sort of color changes you want. So for example, my reef aquarium, as the night progresses on, the light gets bluer and bluer. Um, and I think that's a really nice feature. So let's take a really quick look at each tank. So we have my Shell Dweller Aquarium. These guys are called Multifasciatus or sometimes known as Maltese. And they're a beautiful little fish. I luckily got these guys off a local breeder. Um, so they're sort of young adults. I'm hoping to get some breeding from them soon, but they've already rearranged this aquarium exactly how they want it. This aquarium has a tiny little heater and it's just run off a sponge filter. The light on this aquarium is a fluval aqua sky for those of you that are wondering. Um, and yeah, these fish are beautiful. They are a bit shy if you get too close, but um, yeah, I really do hope to get some breeding activity from these guys soon. And the second tank down, this is my nano reef and it's super simple mega easy it's a real basic setup but it's been working really well for the past nine months or so so this tank is home to florence and lawrence um my pair of clownfish um beautiful little fish clownfish are my my favorite fish overall um i know they're a saltwater fish but yeah these guys are incredible um such beautiful little fish, striking colours. And this tank is really basic. It's just run off a Eheim Mini Up internal filter for flow. And there's absolutely nothing in the actual filter. There's no media, uh, no sponge, nothing. Uh, sometimes I put a bit of filter floss in there after a maintenance just to help catch any debris that's floating around. But as you can see, the tank is looking pretty good. Now, I have to admit, I've been a bit relaxed with maintenances recently in terms of cleaning the glass. And uh, I have suddenly noticed a little bit of hair out is taken hold. Nothing too much. I think I'll do some more water changes and help get it back on track. But I just wanted a saltwater aquarium that quite honestly was not too much hassle. So I've put a lid on rather than have to worry too much about evaporation. You know, it doesn't evaporate much. I've just used this sort of um, corrugated flexi plastic. I use it on all the aquariums just to build a custom lid. Um, stops the fish jumping, but also helps hold in condensation um, and the corals in here are sort of mega easy so we've got a bit of GSP it's a bit grumpy after a minute I've just done a water change a little toadstool coral a neon green cabbage coral which looks really nice and then we've got a green leather toadstool coral here a bit of pulsing xenia which I'm keeping an eye on it's not going too crazy uh, a neon green sinularia and a slightly grumpy looking um, green sort of finger leather coral. Um, and yeah, this tank is just doing really well. It's just ticking over really. Um, as I've said before, it's lit by a Kessel A80 uh, tuna blue light. So, 
you know, more than enough light for a tank like this. All these corals are just soft corals. Um, and yeah, it's just really quick and easy to do maintenances on it. So the fish are looking really healthy. I do see a bit of breeding behavior, but I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully one day I'll, I'll try to maybe um, rear some, some young uh, clownfish. I think clownfish fry, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, but that's probably a future project for now. They're still sort of growing a little bit. Um, but yeah, Florence, the female here, she definitely keeps Lawrence in his place. Uh, but yeah, beautiful tank. Um, has a lot of flow towards the surface there and I really enjoy watching this tank. Okay, and here is my planted community aquarium. So it's quite a simple little setup. Just got some serious stones, some black sand and some Vallisneria. I have my little school of Cardinal Tetras. These guys are doing really well. Um, and I've also got some vampire shrimp. This guy's just picking up a bit of food. I've just fed the tank and some of the food's falling on the floor and he's just going there cleaning it all up. Um, these guys are really reclusive. It's actually quite uh, surprising to see him out and about. He normally comes out at night and sits on top of the rock, just sort of with his fans out catching food. These guys, those of you that don't know, sort of eat fine bits of uh, food from the water column. Um, I also have in here some coolie loaches, although I'll be honest with you, it might be quite tricky to see them. There, you can see one just down there. I will be doing another video on this tank as well. Um, in fact, it might already be up, um, which just should give a bit of a closer look on what I've got in here. But I've got some young uh, Ancestress, um, which I think are hiding at the moment, but these guys just in here as they're getting beaten up a bit. But uh, really enjoying this tank. Um, I did do a, a bit of a rescape on it recently and really liking how it's looking. The uh, Phallus areas, as you can see there, it's already starting to send up runners, which is really cool. So hopefully this tank will turn into a bit of jungle, which a bit of a jungle soon, which I'm sure the fish will appreciate. Okay, on to the bottom tank. This is my sort of Tanganyikan biotope. Um, lovely little aquarium just set up for Neolamprologus le lupe, otherwise known as the lemon cichlid. So... These guys are just a small rock dwelling cichlid from Lake Tanganyika and they appreciate really hard water. So I've got some aragonite sand in there and I've just got some grey rocks. I haven't put any plants in here, um, just kind of kept it with a natural look. This is probably what they're used to seeing in the wild, although these guys were, were captive bred. Um, so they've grown up a fair bit. Um, this female on the left, I believe it to be a female, she's dug a little nest, a little cave down there. So I'm hoping that eventually we get some breeding going on in this aquarium. She does, as you can see, they get a bit feisty with the other two. I believe the other two to be males, um, although one male does seem to hang out um, next to her quite a lot. So I'm hoping in the near future I get some breeding going on there. Um, I think that would be really nice. I've not bred these guys before and I do have some other aquariums set up just in case I need to move some fry into. But yeah, uh, these are probably one of my favourite freshwater fish. Uh, I just think the yellow colours are so stunning. Um, yeah, beautiful little fish. So once I get a breeding pair, I will remove uh, the other fish just to let the pair sort of get on and, and breed without being uh, sort of disrupted or, or anything like that. But yeah, this uh, this tank is really nice. I'm, I'm really enjoy this one. Um, I've let a bit of algae grow on the rocks, as you can see there when you get up close. Um, but obviously from back far, you don't really notice it. I just think it gives the tank a natural look. And it just helps, I think, uh, in terms of fry, I think it helps sort of feed the fry. Um, and it will help sort of with water parameters and just, just overall keeps the tank just looking a bit more natural. Okay, so that was a closer look at all the tanks. So I'm really enjoying the rack of aquariums, really enjoying how each one is evolving. Um, I love the fact that I have these uh, in the lounge. I spend a lot of time in here. I'm always watching what these guys are up to. So if you guys have any questions for me, be sure to leave them in the comments. Uh, if you're new here or if you enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed, maybe consider subscribing for more aquarium related content. Uh, but until then, guys, I will catch up with you in a bit. Just remember to sit back and enjoy your aquariums for what they are. All too often, I find you can get caught up with all the little details, what thing you're going to change next. But just sit back, relax and enjoy your aquariums for what they are and enjoy the fish. All right. Take care. And I'll see you guys soon. All right. Bye.